theyeshiva.net. Morning, everybody. So we started the Maimer Chayav Inish Lebesume Bepuria Adelayada Bein Arur Haman Labarach Mardachai. There's two of my Mardim and Tairai which begin with the same words, but this is the second one, page 195. So the Balatanya started to explain that we find that the Navi calls Taira Mashal HaKadmaini or Mashal HaKadmaini. Shleim HaMelech also says, Lahavin Inyan Mashal HaMelitza. Taira is called a Mashal. A Mashal means a parable, a metaphor. What is it a metaphor for? So he explains it's Mashal HaKadmaini. It's a metaphor for Kadmain, for the Kadmaini. Thank you. Kadmaini is Kadmaino Yishal Oilam. Kadmaina Shalalam is, Hashem is called Kadmaina Shalalam, which means the primordial one before the world, the source, the core, the genesis of everything, the Metzias that precedes every Metzias, the reality that precedes intrinsically every other reality, because all reality comes from this reality. Like the Rambam says in the beginning of Yad Chazaka, that Yisaid HaYisaidus V'amud HaChachmas is to know that there's a Matzu Yerushan for who Mamtzi Chol Nimtza V'chol HaNimtzoyim M'shamayim V'aretz Amasha B'neihem Lo'y Nimtzu Ela Me'amitas Hi Matzai There's a primal and primary existence from which every Nimtza comes that's called Kadman Kadmai Noi Shalailam So Torah is a Mashal Meshala Kadmai It's a Mashal for Kadman On a deeper level the Balatanya explains that Kadmoina Shalalam represents Eirein Saif Baruch Hu itself. The Ein Saif, the light of the Ein Saif itself. You have what we call Mamale Kalalman, you have what we call Saif of Kalalman. These are all relationships, types of Chiyus, types of energy, so to speak, that Hashem gives to the world. One relationship, one type of vitality is called Mamale, one is called Saiviv. Or Pnimi, or Makif, which we explained in the previous year, before Shabbos. That's all a relationship with the world. Then there is what he says, Mohusiv Atzmusi, his essence is not even in the realm of the worlds. You can't even use on it the word Memali, not even the word Seviv. So it's called Kadmoino Shal Oilam, the essence himself, itself, which transcends even Seviv Kalaman is an infinite. But it's infinity in relationship to the world. Atmos is completely beyond Geder Alman. That's called Kadmoini Shalolam. And Torah is called Meshal HaKadmoini. The marshal for Kadmoini Shalolam. What does it mean it's a marshal for Kadmoini Shalolam? So let's continue inside. Tzadik uh, Ches column 2, or 195 column 2. It's around, I don't know, 10 or 12 lines from the top. The line starts... Uh, Torah is a mushal, a metaphor for that dimension, for that reality, for that truth, which we call Kadmoina Shalala. What does this mean? What's the function of a mushal? Again, we explained this in the previous year, the function of a marshal is, it's a stepping stone to be able to understand the nimshal. That's what a marshal is. If a nimshal, the nimshal is the theme itself, the marshal is the metaphor, the parable, the story, the illustration, the example, the allegory, the riddle in which you are manifesting, you're, uh, you're dressing up a mushal is like a lavush. You dress up the nimshal with a mushal. It makes it more accessible. Because the nimshal sometimes is too, is too abstract. It's too deep. It's too profound. Nobody's going to get it. So the mushal allows you to understand the nimshal. So he says, Just like through the Marshal Yusuf Hanimshal Kach, 
על ידי שתלמודי בידי יזכה לגילוי מבחינת זיו ואיר מאיר אין צייב ברכו. מה שלמיילד מבחינת סבב כלל מן הממל הכלל מן ואיני בגדר על מן כלל. Just like when you want to explain the student who may be simpler, a profound idea which may be too subtle, too abstract for him to comprehend, so you have to give a marshal. The marshal is always something that relates to his world or her world. That's the value of a marshal. The value of a marshal is always, it's relatable to my world. That's why it piques my interest and it allows me to get it. Because it's something I know from my internal or external world. And now, once you get the marshal, the teacher could now show you, ah, you got the marshal, now let me show you how this will point and really is a mirror and a reflection for the nimshin. So he says, Teire is called Meshal HaKadmaini because Teire Talmudei Biyadei allows the person, the gilu, the revelation of Kadmaini Shalaylam. It's Meshal HaKadmaini. It's... It's not literally a taich mashal akadmaini is. It's Hashem is mashalim. It's it's God's metaphors. The question is, the whole Torah is metaphors. I mean, there's metaphors in Torah. There's examples in Torah. There's parables in Torah. But much of Torah is not mashalim. So it's not here. Taich is not mashal akadmaini. It's just a mashal of the kadman. It's Hashem is mashalim. It's like God's storybooks. Mashal akadmaini. It's a mashal for kadmaini. It's a mashal that allows one. To be able to experience Kadmai Neshalaylam. It allows one to be able to experience the Eirin Saif, that which is even beyond Saif of Kalam, and that which is beyond the Malik Kalam. Ve'enay begeder alman Kalal, it's not even in the realm of worlds at all. Hashem Himself, Kadmai Neshalaylam, which is completely transcends any aspect of creation. So there's no way, there's no tool, there's no method for creation to be able to grasp it. For this, there's a mashal. What's the mashal? The mashal is Torah, mashal akadmani. Because the Torah is like a mashal <coughs> that a person could grasp with human intellect. So through the mashal, one can then grasp the nimshal. What does this mean? So he starts explaining. Ki The comprehension of Torah, there are many levels, many states. Enkets. Enkets means there's no end. Deeper and deeper, higher and higher. The essence of the comprehension in the realm that we call Ganeidin Atachten, the lower level of paradise, is completely not comparable to the Mohus, to the essence of comprehension, the way it's in Ganeidin Elyon. It's not just a higher level. It says, Ein Aroich. There's no Erech, meaning you can't compare. It's a different, it's a different Mohus Asaga. It's a different type, type of comprehension. The Hasaga of a soul of uh, somebody in Gan Eden Alien is completely not the same like in Gan Eden Atacht. V'lachein ha-sagas sheb Gan Eden Atacht and l'gabe ha-sagas sheb Gan Eden Alien hu rakam ha-erech ha-marshal l'gabe ha-nimshin. So the level of comprehension in Gan Eden Atacht and l'gabe Gan Eden Alien would be like a marshal relative to a nimshin. Just like you can't compare the mushal to the nimshal, the nimshal is, the mushal is completely from a different world. It just gives you access. So ganeid na tachtoin, the lower level of ganeid, there's comprehension of truth over there, of Torah there, of of, of godly wisdom. But legabe, what's grasped in ganeid na it's called a mushal. It's like a, a a parable, a metaphor, an illustration. It's just through the mushal you can climb the ladder and go deeper to the nimshal. So, so what's fascinating here is that Ganeid Natachten is tremendously profound, but Lagabi a higher place, it's still called a mush. yesh madregis ein ketz. This is just two examples. But similarly, 
you have madregas, you have levels that are ain't cats. They're infinite. V'gamla mailam eganeid nalyan. Not only till Ganeid Nalyan, even above, even above Ganeid Nalyan, just like the difference between Ganeid Natachtan and Ganeid Nalyan, there's Madregus levels in understanding Torah that are endless, even transcending Ganeid Nalyan. That's why we say, says Kumashaim, we say in Davening, Ukdoshim Bechol Yoim Yahalaluchasel. Ata Kadosh Vashim Chakadosh, Ukdoshim Bechol Yoim Yahalaluchasel. What does this mean literally? It means. Ukadoshim, the holy ones, Bechal Yom every day, Yahalalucha will praise you. And then he says the word Sela. The Gemara says in Mesechus Erevin, whenever it says Netzach or Sela, Vayat, ain't like Hefsik. There's no interruption. So what's Yahalalucha Sela? So the Balatanya Taiches, Kumar Shikas of Belukutayashas La Rizal. As the Rizal says in his Sefer, Lukutayashas, it's a commentary of the Rizal on Shas, Al Maimir Azal. Gemara says, the end of Masechus Brachas, Tzadikim ein lem in nucha, loy boy lam hazav, loy boy lam habash nama yelche mechayel el choyel. Tzadikim don't have min nucha, rest. Not in this world, and not in the world to come. As the Pasuk says, they go from strength to strength. So the Arizal explains, what's pshat ein lem in nucha, loy boy lam hazav, loy boy lam haba. So he says, just like Hashem is ein soif, the Torah is ein soif. It's in, literally infinite. And infinity doesn't give you menucha because you reach tremendous states, but relative to infinity, the distance is still infinite. So therefore, the higher they go, it's not like the more they feel they attained. The higher they go, the more they feel they didn't attain. Because when you're touching infinity, the more you get, the more you realize... <laughs> You, you, the more you appreciate it, the more you appreciate it, the more you appreciate its infinity, the more you appreciate the fact that you didn't get. And also, the more you get, you realize that it's not like, I'm going to reach the destination. You know, when you're far away, you say, if I get there, I know I got there. The more you, when you get there, and you didn't get there, now you know you're not getting there. When you don't have a lot, so you say, okay, at some point I'll get it. When you really have it, you realize... <laughs> I was supposed to get it, I didn't, because it's infinite. So, other people could have menucha. When you touch the ain't soif, ain't like menucha, loy boy lamaz, shnemer yelchem achal alcha. So, what's the havana? The havana here is that every madrega, legabe, the previous one, may be tremendously high, but there's still an element of ain't soif. So, it's bekadosh bechal yom, yahalalucha sela. There's no soif. Why? Because there's always you discover more and more, and therefore you praise more. You discover more and more and more and more, and the more you discover, you only discover more. Like I shared the story left for when was it before Shabbos about Reb Mendel Haradaka and the Balatanya with some Chastera Ataresa. Yeah, you get to the, what you think is the horizon, and now the horizon extends extends much further. V'chol hasaga legabi mashal amaylam emena nikre mashal. Every hasaga, every comprehension, relative to what is above it, is always called a marshal. Which means what is a nimshal on one level becomes a marshal relative to a higher level. So it's like you ascend. There is a marshal and then you reach the nimshal. But this nimshal is only a marshal relative to yet a deeper state of comprehension. So now the nimshal suddenly turned into a marshal. Even though relative to that which was below, it was a nimshal, relative to that which is above, it became a mashal. And then the nimshal that is yet above it becomes yet a mashal to that which is above it. That's just, And this is the meaning of what it says by Shleimah HaMelech. When the Torah describes the wisdom of Shleim Melech in Melachim, kings, Melachim Aleph Perek Hey, the Torah, the Tanakh says, Vayidaber Shloishus Aleph and Mashal. Shloim spoke, Solomon spoke, 3,000 parables. How do you explain this? So literally the interpretation is that Shleim had this repertoire. He had this uh, treasure chest of parables not a hundred, and not two hundred, and not a thousand, and not two thousand. He had three thousand mashalim up his sleeve. And for everything, he had a mashal and explanation. You know? 
like the Dubna Magid, yeah, had a marshal for everything. Everything he had a marshal. The Dubna Magid, yeah, any idea, he would tell a story. And he was one of the famous Magidim of his time. It was a contemporary of the Vilna Gaon, 1700s. Rabbi Yaakov Krantz was his name. He came from Dubna, the Dubna Magid, Rabbi Yaakov Krantz. And uh, he would go around. He was a preacher, he was a Magid. And he had Mashalim. They once asked the Dubna Magid, how do you have Mashalim for everything? Every idea he would say in Chumash and in Gemara and Shas, everything, he had a marshal. How do you have a so He said, I'll give you a marshal. <laughs> I'll give you a marshal. And what was the marshal he gave? <laughs> the marshal the Dubna Magid gave was that there was a Jew and they saw that they were doing target practice. And they saw that, you know, there is the, there is the, the bullseye. And he always gets it. Every arrow that he ever shot is in the bullseye. He never, ever missed a target. And even if the bullseye is mamish tiny, he still gets it. So they asked the Shefalas, when, when did you develop such skill, such genius? He says, Poshut, I first shoot the arrow. Then I draw the bullseye around the arrow. That's how it happened. That's how I do it. So I never miss. <laughs> you guys are chachamim. You first drew the, to draw the target, and now you have to aim. I don't have to do that. I set the target, and then I do it around it. So it's always good. So the Dubna Magid says, I have a marshal first. <laughs> I have a marshal first. I have my stories. Now I figure out the story goes for this, the story goes for this, the story goes for this. You shoot the arrow. Now I drew, I drew, I do, I do it around the arrow, not the other way around. <laughs> it's the mashal of the Dubna Magad to explain the mashalim of the Dubna Magad. Vaidabish Shloyshus Alafim Mashal doesn't look like so much the idea of wisdom. It just means Shloyma Melechad Gavaldik a compilation of many ideas and stories and jokes. <laughs> for everything, he had another mashal. What's such shloshes aloph and marshal? 3,000 mashalim. And that's how the Tanakh describes the wisdom. So the Alter Rebbe here explains something, say, absolutely magnificent, what the Pasuk means. It means as follows. Listen to this. Dahainu. Well, let's put it this way. What's the big godless? So you have 3,000. Okay, so you, have, so you have three. So you had a good memory. It says, Dahainu. Hadover hazem musag maganeid natacht and kach. This concept is explained, it's comprehended in Ganeid Natacht in one way. In Ganeid Na'alyan, this very theme, this very idea is understood, but in a completely different way. Much more spiritual, much more Naila, much more sublime. So that the first dimension of explanation is a marshal relative to the next dimension of explanation. Shleim HaMelech comprehended, according to this fashion, 3,000 levels on every word, on every idea, on every theme, on every insight of, of Torah. That's the Pshat. There are so many words, words of he said, Aden Ketz. <laughs> 3,000 is not even the, uh, the, the full number. <laughs> even 3,000. I mean, 3,000 expresses the wisdom. But he said, it's Ein Lahem Anuch, Aden Ketz. What's the Pasuk saying about Shleim HaMelech? Shleim HaMelech's understanding in truth and wisdom and Torah was so profound that he comprehended in every aspect of Torah 3,000 dimensions, 3,000 levels of understanding, one deeper than another. Not just he had a, a, a marshal and another marshal, another marshal, another marshal, another marshal, 3,000 stories for something, or 3,000 stories for 3,000 different things. No. The same Indian he understood on... Usually, you understand, you understand what, if you understand what somebody tells you, you understand, it's trying good. He understood it in a more abstract way, and yet in a more abstract way, in a more abstract way, 3,000 levels. And the distance between one and the other was so profound that the first 
is called a marshal legabe the one above it. Like we said, the ganed natachten legabe ganed nalyan is a marshal. Yeah. Or to put it differently, Shleim HaMelech had an idea, but it wouldn't be understood, so he had to give a marshal. He had to give a marshal. The marshal allowed the idea to come down. The problem is, the marshal was too abstract. So the marshal also had to have a marshal, because the marshal was an imshal. So for marshal 3000, he had to get to marshal 2999. But still, I couldn't understand that. So he said, I have another marshal, 2998, 2997. Finally, we come to Marshall 5. It's too abstract. <laughs> he already went down three, almost 3,000 left. Too he had Marshall 4. Too deep. Marshall 3, Marshall 2. Then was Marshall 1. Ah! Marshall 1, I got. We got. You got Marshall 1. Oh, now you'll get 2. Now you'll get the Nimshal of 2, which is a Marshall for 3, which is the Nimshal for 2, but a Marshall for 4. Huh? The babushkas, the, 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 the Russian babushkas, huh? Matroshkas, yeah? You open it up. Ashvacha marshal, yeah? He was trying to give a marshal. That's below 3,000, but fine. Huh? <laughs> I think I heard once that, I don't know if it's correct, that Shlomo Melech was so smart, he could explain to a fool <laughs> Which is the hardest thing. Le Marshall. If I'm going to say here in the class, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yeah? Even I, who's notorious yeah, for saying Mishalom, <laughs> for good or not so good, even I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm going to 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? But if you'll go to pre-1A, or you'll go to the the nursery group, the group for the children, yeah, age two or age three, or sometimes even older, right? Two plus two equals four means nothing. Two plus two equals four means nothing. You're going to take two pieces of watermelon and another two pieces of watermelon, right? Then you're going to go one and two and three and four. Why do you do that? And the child will understand. They say there was once a kid in Hebrew school. So uh, the, he was in public school, but he came to Hebrew school Sunday morning. This time you come to Hebrew school. So it was Parshas Noyach. So the student said, today we're going to learn about Noah. Noah had three children, Shem, Cham, and Yafas. The kid said, I don't know what you're talking about. So he said, there are three kids living on your block, your neighbors? Yeah, what are their names? He says, Tom, Dick, and Harry. He says, oh, great. So Tom is one boy, Dick is another boy, and Harry is another boy, right? Excellent. So Noah had three boys. Sheim, Cham, and Yafas. The teacher was so excited by his brilliance. Boy comes home. Grandpa says, what do you study in school today? He said, Noah had three sons. Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> Why did I take the pieces of watermelon or the cubes and I show the child one, two, three, four. Everybody here knows two plus two equals four. That's the classic case of a marshal. That's what a marshal is. Two plus two equals four is an idea. You heard this idea so many years, so you're used to the idea, you're good, right? But the first time I'm hearing this idea, it's a very big thing, two plus two equals four. And four minus two equals two, and two minus one equals one. I'm not going to give a marshal here in this class. Do I have to read about it? You understand. You got it. <laughs> very good, take notes. Take notes. But it's not a simple thing. The child, you, uh, a watermelon, I understand. Why? Why can you understand 2 plus 2? The answer is because 2 plus 2 is, in his world or her world, abstract. Watermelon, especially if you have a lollipop, even better, is not abstract. It's real. One lollipop, two lollipops is reality. Three lollipops is even a greater reality. Four lollipops is a wonderful reality. Two plus two equals four lollipops. Now, hopefully, he can go back and understand what two plus two equals four.
So this we all understand. <laughs> this is a marshal and a nimshal we all understand. But the wisdom is infinite because God is infinite. So Torah is God's wisdom, it's infinite. So Shlai Ma'amelech, his wisdom, he touched such a deep place of wisdom that for every idea, he had to be medaber, shloishes, alaf, and mashlul. For the one idea, he had to give 3,000 mashallah. And it wasn't 3,000 different stories to entertain people. Each mashal was a lavush for a higher level of wisdom. And then that mashal must yet require another mashal to dress up that mashal, which required another mashal, until the final mashal is, ah, the watermelon, I got it. Or the lollipop. It's what the mushal does for an imshal. A mushal is not only a tzimtzum. A mushal is not just filtering the information in a concise way. A mushal is transporting the information to another reality. Yes, very well. Is that good? That is thus. The point is, Shloim HaMelech wanted that you and I should follow it. That's why he gave 3,000 mashalim. Us, people. Symptom could mean you take the information and you filter it, you compress it, you say it in a short, like Mishnah Lagabe Gemara. Yeah, G- Mishnah is it's, it's Derech Tzar. If you read a Sugi and Gemara, it's all in the Mishnah. An extra word, an extra letter. He wrote it this way, he wrote it that. But in the Mishnah, it's so concise, right? Because he wanted it should be compressed. It should be you should be able to learn it with a ten year old. You should get all the information, and then it's like unzipping the file. Then you unzip the file, it's all there. A mushal is something else. A mushal is you take the idea and you transport it into another reality. The I- numbers is an idea. Watermelon is a physical reality. Lollipops is a physical reality. The idea of a mushal is not just to filter the information that it should use, use simpler words. You bring it into the world of the listener, of the audience, and for that you have to understand his world. Because the original world of the idea, he has no relationship, he has no access to. There's no access. You're speaking to somebody who doesn't hear what you're saying. It doesn't exist in his world. So you have to find the idea, the way it can be transported into an issue, into a realm that exists in his world and means something in his world. No, 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 no. Because the idea was too profound. The idea was too profound. To get to us. To get to us, it had to go down. It's like a ladder, 3,000 steps. Yeah. So it's not just watering it down, giving a part of it, or just saying it in a simple way. It's a, a muscle is transporting it to the world of the, of the student. The problem is, if you would give one muscle, it would still be 2,999 uh, uh, light years away from me. So how do I get there? So I had to be 2998. And then finally, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, uh, touchdown. That's the beauty of mathematics because it's in a way finite. Yeah. So you cannot say there is a motion for 2 plus 2 because 2 plus 2 is 2 plus 2. That's it. Right? Yeah. Mathematics is essentially the language to be able to convey to convey profound ideas. Physics employs mathematics as its language. It's like, as you explained, like using the- Kabbalah, like Chassidus Kabbalah Now you all know a great physicist looks at a mathematical equation and his face lights up. Yeah, yeah. I could look at the same mathematical equation and I'm like, huh? You get depressed or confused or a migraine or even worse, at least you're getting depressed. Another like, what? Why do people do this scribble? What's this scribble? Or same as with musical notes. The musician looks at the musical notes, right? And he suddenly, uh, he's humming a tune, a tanst, a tanst, adalayada. I'm looking at the same musical notes and it's like, it's as monotonous as it gets. He sees, he sees the nimshal and the mashal. He doesn't see black lines, he sees music. I, 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 I'm not capable of that. I can't see it and that's not, it's not my word. I don't know how to read music or mathematical equations or an architect's plans, etc. So the, the same is true with ideas, with concepts. So the Alter Rebbe says that in Torah, this can go ad ein ketz, infinite. 
That's why Talmidei Chachamim ain't la menuchah. The Gemara says, Mishemais Reb Meir, Batlu Moshle Meshalom. When Reb Meir passed away, there were no, no, this is gone the era of anybody to say a Moshal. Moshle Meshalom were gone. Shtotzich the Shaila, the Dubna Magid. And plenty other people who said Mishalim. In fact, there's people who they, they live off this. They say Mishalim constantly. No more Mishalim. Would a man had a copyright on all parables in the world? The Pshat is the Gemara says about Reb Meir. This is what the Baltanya is explaining. The Gemara says about Reb Meir, Masech the Erev and Dafyud Gimel, that Reb Meir, the Halacha, is never like it's usually never like Reb Meir. Why? Shalayachlu Chachamim Lamad Al Saif Daiter. They couldn't understand him. They couldn't make the halacha like him. It was he was too profound. They knew he was greater than everybody, but it was something they couldn't understand. It means he wasn't able to convey to them anymore. It was, it was deeper. It says Mayor Mayor and and they they never reached soif daita. Reb Meir's wisdom was so deep, he had to give a marshal and a marshal on a marshal and a marshal on the marshal and a marshal on the marshal to be able to convey his chachma. That's a different type of marshal. We give mashalim based on entertainment. <laughs> Bring it down one level. But this art of marshal and mashalim by Shleim HaMelech was 3,000. Reb Meir, the Gemara says, Hanedin, there were 300 that were, that we, and, and the Gemara says that we remember a few of them, one or two of them that we remember, with the wolf and the, the, the fox out of Shabbos, we once learned the Maimon about. So Reb Meir also always read, yeah, yeah, Reb Meir spoke in Nimshal, not in Mashal. No, Reb Meir was a Talmud of Acher. Elisha ben Avuya was a, was a Rebbe of Reb Meir, and even after he became an apostate, Reb Meir still remained, remained by him. He remained, he not remained, but he still learned by him. Everyone else separated. Reb Meir went, and the Gemara says, how did he do it? So the Gemara says, He knew how to take out the insides and to discard the clippers, the shells. Most people can't. It gets too mixed in. A banana, it's very clear what's the shell, what's the banana. When it comes to truth, you don't know what's the teich, what's the clipper. It's not like, uh, it's like a pomegranate. It's outside eingemischt. So in a pomegranate, one is bitter and one is not bitter, so you know. But it's mixed in. But a mayor had a chush of teich zarak. And the truth is, it's also connected to this. Because the mashal, the gabba, the nimshal, is the clipper, the gabba, the teich. You understand? The nimshal is the teich. The mashal is the clipper. I, I don't have access to a banana if I don't deal with the shell. That's why Shabbos, you're allowed to peel a banana or an orange. Why is it not boyer? Shabbos, you're not allowed to take and separate the bad from the good. So why are you allowed to peel a banana on Shabbos? Right? So the basic answer is, you're not separating the bad. You're trying to access the good. There's no way you can get to the banana without the peel. So are you allowed to eat a banana on Shabbos? Derech the way to eat it, you got to take, you got to get rid of the peel. You're not, you're not separating the peel from the food. You're trying to eat. If I have a salad and I take out the onions, I can eat the tomatoes without the onions. Just take the tomatoes while you're separating the onions. But how am I supposed to eat the banana if I don't, if I don't chill of the peel? So the, the uh, the, the pill becomes it becomes mukta. After it becomes mukta, the beginning it's not mukta. The beginning it's not mukta because you can't eat it without it. After you get rid of the pill, and the pill is not edible unless you have monkeys who can eat uh, eat the pills, then it's not mukta because if your animal can eat it, it's not mukta. But if you don't have monkeys around, if you're not living in Durban or uh, Umschlanga, where there's monkeys in the hotels. Near the hotels, I was there once. I know they told me don't leave the window open because the monkey will come in and eat your food. So uh, it becomes muktzah. In other words, the mushal is a clipper. I don't have access to the banana without it. Once I get to the nimshal, you don't stick to the mushal anymore. It becomes irrelevant. That's what he's saying. In Ganeid Natachtim, it's wow, wow, wow. In Ganeid Alien, it's like. You're going to start sitting with what should bring in watermelons here to start explaining one plus one equals two. Give everybody a lollipop. Yeah, it's like going to be a little strange. I mean, you probably won't mind a lollipop Sunday morning. Watermelon sounds better, yeah? How's the Elisha been aware? Because we know on the highest level he made a mistake. 
So how does but that mean you can learn from him? Because all this Mishalim already derived from mistake. In mistaking uh, uh, one thing for another. So how did we learn? Because all of them is already shaken. Apparently, Rav Meir, uh, but what's the story? So you're asking, how could a mayor learn from him? If Rabbi Lisha ben Avoye made a mistake on the deepest level, it trickled down into, it's like, it's like the first equation was a mistake. So every equation that follows afterwards till the Nobel Prize is all a mistake. Uh, no, but I, th- I think that's part of the idea. Toichei Achal doesn't just mean he took the inside of Elisha ben Avoye. He took the inside of the inside of Elisha ben Avoye. Meaning he can identify where the mistake was and not get lost over there. Yeah. He can identify where the distortion was and not and therefore not become part of it. The moment you can identify where the distortion is, now you're emancipated. Because he was not a victim of it anymore. He wasn't part of the distortion. And that's the Chiddush of Toich Achal. He can go to the Toich of Elisha ben Avuya where Elisha ben Avuya himself didn't go because he got distorted. One level above his teacher. He wasn't told in the story. We have the story where May went with him and told him. Shabbos. Shabbos. Yeah, yeah, obviously that's, that's where there was a toich there. The Gemara says that it was on Shabbos. You understand what I'm saying? It's this very, very deep idea. Huh? The moment, in other words, distortions only become distortions when you become part of them. <laughs> the moment I can identify that's where the distortion is, you're good. So basically, the fake news still give you information. Yes, it gives you a lot of information. Distortion sometimes gives you the very deep information. Look at yourself. Your own distortions can help you discover so many things about yourself, as long as you can identify them as distortions. <laughs> if you don't buy into them. For the distortions, as long as you're aware, if you're not aware that the distortions themselves, then you Michelle, aren't relevant. Exactly, yeah. So how are you able to learn from those? You can only learn from the... No, no, if, if, if you see that it's a marshal, <laughs> distortions are also Mishalim. <laughs> That's the idea. Different types of mashalim. Every distortion could be a mashal, as long as you know the nimshal. Like in Russia, we used to read between the lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to read between You have to know, yeah. The yeah. yeah. The, the Russian media was like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah means no, no means yeah, day means night, night means day. Stalin is healthy means he's about to die. <laughs> In Russia, we knew when Israel is losing the war. So Israel is losing the war. It's good news. You can start dancing. You can start dancing, yeah. By the Six-Day War, Egypt and Jordan, they were sending out messages, we're winning, where the Zionists are about to die, right? And the Russian Jews knew if it's coming from Arab sources, it's time to dance. If Israel is losing by them, it means it's, it's good news. They have to sell propaganda because, um, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. That's what we learned last year. We learned the Maimah Viyadaita from the Rebbe Rashab Viyadaita Moscow, you remember? So over there he explains that every world is a mushal for the nimshal of Ein Saif. In other words, Esa Sviris is a mushal for Ein Saif. Yeah, Abriya is a mushal for Atzilis. Yitzir is a mushal for Briya. Asi is a mushal. The whole concept of Seder Hishtalshalos, which means the evolutionary process, which is one of the most fundamental ideas in Pnimiya Satera, in Kabbalah and Chsidus, is this idea. Seder Hishtalshalos means that truth evolves from space to space, from level to level, from world to world, and every world becomes a mushal that allows you access to the nimshal that's above it, because without this mushal, there would be no way that it could become concretized in a way that anybody of that world can relate to it. It just remains above, it remains infinite. But that world is still too high for others. So you have an Hisham of Olam Abriya. The Hisham of Olam Abriya could be Toif as the Marshal of Briya. But an Hisham of Yitzira, it doesn't mean anything. It's, 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 you're talking to me about Riyah, I just don't get it. So it needs a new Marshal. And Asiya, it doesn't mean anything. Your Marshal is still completely irrelevant to me. I, I, need, I, I, I need a new Marshal. If a mushal is a different reality than a nimshal, how can it be a different reality if they're all fair and safe? Just, it sounds like it's not a different reality. You said a mushal is always a different it's reality. It's transporting the information to people who are living in a different modality so they should be able to have access. It's the same reality, just yeah. different. Um, 
completely different lavush. In its pnimius, it's the same reality. That's why it serves as a mushal. If it's not the same reality, it can be a mushal for the nimshal. The two pieces of watermelon are two. <laughs> but it's through the watermelon. Because watermelon, I see, I feel, I touch, I taste. I, I, it's watermelon. Two is still abstract like for that three-year-old child. Like you're right. You're right. Here, here it's much, much deeper. Shloy Mahamelech, his ideas, yeah, he had a havan of 3,000 layers in Torah. So he could take an idea and then go back, three, th- go up 3,000 levels and down 3,000 levels. And because it was so profound, he had to go down 3,000 levels to be able to convey it. Uh, uh, so this is a hagdam, so, so this is a hagdam to understand Marshall Hakadmoini. So we're going to get to this question. So if it's infinite, so you're just getting to another marshal, another marshal, another marshal, and you always remain in the mishalom. Do you ever get to the? Do you ever get to the nimshal? If there's three thousand, the case after three thousand, I'm by the nimshal. But you're saying it's not even three thousand. That's a great. Do you ever come to the nimshal? That's. The, do you ever come to the nimshal? And if you don't, don't call it marshal lakadmani. You never come to the nimshal. Three thousand physical It's not so negaya. It's a mush. It's a mush. You want to know if it means the number 3,000? It could mean the number 3,000. You don't have to say the number 3,000 is just... Uh, but it's representing something. The point is not the number 3,000. The point is 3,000 l- dimensions of, of thought. 3,000 links. 3,000 madregas. Imagine a ladder of 3,000 steps. But each step is a completely different world than the step before. It's not like on a ladder you go from one step to the same step, just a higher geographical space. When we say here higher, it means another mode, another mode of thought, another way of seeing things. That legabe in the previous world, you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to grasp it. That's why you needed the marshal. Because if I would take you straight into that world, it would mean nothing. It would just... It's not something you can relate to. You need to, to internalize it. You must have the marshal. This is also a marshal, yeah? <laughs> hmm? The Baal Shem Tov says that whenever a person experiences love in this world or fear in this world, yeah, it's basically God reaching out to them through a marshal. <laughs> through a marshal. In other words... <laughs> It's a very, very deep idea. I'm experiencing fear or awe of something, right? The Bosham says, don't get stuck on the marshal. <laughs> it's just God knows that it's very hard for you to relate to pure divinity. So he manifests himself in whatever it is that you're falling in love with or whatever it is that you're experiencing fear of. So you should just know, you should be able to see that the pnimius of that is Hashem wants a relationship with you. So the whole world is really a marshal. Everything is a marshal. Every experience in life is a marshal for a nimshal. If I can only strip it from its outer layer and go to a deeper core. And the truth is that essentially this idea that Balatanya is telling us is really, it's the essence of the whole Torah of psychology and psychoanalysis of the last 100 and 150 years. Yeah. A person comes into the therapist's office, right? A he or a she, and they're complaining about something that's going on in their life. And what's the job of the mental health professional? Or let's call him the psychoanalyst. The job is, this is only a muscle. <laughs> this is a muscle. Let's get to the nimshal. <laughs> but he doesn't know the nimshal. I know that somebody cut me off in traffic today and I lost it. I know that I came home today and somebody said something I didn't like and I lost it. It was not about the food. It was not about the homework. It was not about the car. Yeah. One said from a therapist, a woman came into her, uh, came into her, to her actually, she wrote it and uh, was complaining about her car, a new car. Her husband got her a new car and the car got damaged. And she was sobbing, just sobbing. And the therapist, who's a Holocaust survivor, Auschwitz survivor, said it was so hard to wrap her brain around it because before that, another woman was there sobbing because her son was diagnosed with terminal illness. And this now this lady, same age, is sobbing about the car, a dent or something in the car. 
So she said initially she wanted to be so dismissive of the second lady and said, you idiot, get out of my office and go talk to the first woman and you'll get some perspective and never come back and I don't need your money. But then she wouldn't be a therapist, right? <laughs> Knock some sense into her head. I don't, I, I don't know the patience. I can't, I'm not going to testify if it's right or wrong. But then she said, I started to think about it. And I realized she's not crying about her car. She's crying about the fact she has no relationship. She got no relationship. She's lonely in this world, and for her, the car represented everything. She has no husband. At least she has her husband's car. <laughs> and now she doesn't have that either. And if you go back to the source, yeah, deeper and deeper and deeper, then yes, today's nimshul is tomorrow's mushal. And tomorrow's nimshul is really a mushal for what will come out the next day. Mm -hmm. And now you'll get to the deepest, deepest, deepest place. And what are you going to find? <laughs> Anybody ever did this work? Huh? Do it every day. Huh? You do it every day? <laughs> we, we do it every day. Did I tell you some Madregas? But you see the idea? But I, if he sits down with you and the first time he starts talking to you about a nimshal, you're never going to come back again. It always starts off with the exterior. Because this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what my brain allows me to see. But if I take it and I unravel it, I unzip it and I excavate it a little bit, this is just, huh? I unpack it. This is only a mushal. And if you get to the nimshal, you'll learn so much more about what is really happening. The nimshal won't negate the mushal, but the nimshal will, will, will show what the mushal really is. But the nimshal itself yet has another nimshal, and another nimshal, and another nimshal. And you can go back very, very far, which is why some people do this their whole life. <laughs> and they get stuck somewhere level 2,000, 2,500. He's just saying, you learn and you learn, and you still die a flow. But the Chiddush here in this Maimer is, when you're going to come back to the core, you're going to come to a place that's beyond Moshul and Nimshul. It's not going to be an idea anymore. Because the deepest core of a human being is not a logical core. It's not Seichel, it's Keser. It's, this is who I am. This is who I am. Okay, we'll see that. What do you want to say? Did I just say you correctly last week you said you don't like the Shabbat? <laughs> what I said last week was that very often in these shiurim, I give mishalom, right? We'll learn an idea and I'll stop and I'll say, let's give a marshal and somehow my mind is going to take me to marriage. Or... Addiction. Isaac, what other mashalom do I give? Any other besides those two? Trauma. Very good. <laughs> Toxicity. Another one. Okay. Those are the four. Okay. Basically. Is there anything else in the world, by the way? Besides trauma, toxicity, dysfunction? And, uh, food? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, what I said is that I don't always like, I don't like doing it. Why? Because we're learning a maimer. The maimer is revealing a lakus. It's revealing godliness in the world. So why do I have to start talking now about people's shalom bias problems? Okay. So the answer is, if I could be very frank, because I look at the audience and I see that there's maybe one person or two people who are melting away in ecstasy and the other ones are bored. They lost interest. And I feel compassion, I'm being honest now, that, they, that, that the, the real information is not powerful enough to transform them. They don't have that access. And therefore, they're getting bored. They're not becoming transported on the wings of the Alter Rebbe to infinity. And I feel compassion. So I ask myself, this is all in a nanosecond. It's not a long uh, this. I ask myself, what's the right thing to do? And then I know the answer. At least in my opinion, maybe I'm mistaken. The right thing to do is to give a muscle <laughs> and say, okay, guys, let's go to your favorite topic. <laughs> Our favorite topic. 
Are you having issues in your marriage? Oh, suddenly they all put down their phones. Suddenly, yeah, slowly they put it. Why? Because I'm describing what happened last night in their house because I have a camera. <laughs> yeah. In other words, you discuss it up anxiety. You start talking about anxiety. The Maimon doesn't say anxiety. He's not talking about anxiety here. <laughs> not because Dalton ever didn't know about anxiety. He knew about anxiety. Yeah. He just said he's the head of the psychology. That's true. He's true. Because he's trying to discuss the MS, the core. He's discussing the nimshal of all anxiety. Anxiety is a muscle. All anxiety is a muscle. But if I don't have access to the core, fine, it's beautiful. I don't know. I believe he's a good man in this. You start talking about people's anxiety, everyone is anxious. I can't say everyone, but a lot of people are anxious. Huh? No, Isaac's questions are good. I'm not going to say it's 3,000 steps. I'm not going to say that. Maybe it's a half a step for me. So what happens? You talk about people's anxiety. You talk about people's marriages. You talk about people's relationship with their children. Oh, this is something that happened in my house last night. He got into a he got into a screaming match with his teenager. Yeah. Why don't I like doing it? I don't like doing it just because by definition it waters down the concept. It's a diluting. It's diluting it. It's not the oil. It's not the ain't safe anymore. But without it, what happens without it? You leave, it's, 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 it's very idealistic, but nobody's connected to it. What happens in so many yeshivas? So, so many of you told me, you sat in yeshiva how many years? Five? Only five years you sat in yeshiva? You never sat. Some people were good kids. <laughs> You're also a good kid, but it expressed itself differently. Some people sat for 15 years and they learned nothing. Why not? Emes? I'm the only guy who sat. Said he saw what happened to the other ones who sat, so he left. He ran. He jumped out the window. No, I'm saying you had people, they sat through a system for 10, 15 years, yeah? They think that Gemara is the most boring book that was ever created in the world. They hear the word Gemara, they emotionally shut down. They will never go back to a Shri Gemara, they didn't touch it for 18 years. What happened? I'm sure the teachers, many teachers were good, and Talmud Chacham, and maybe some were Ga'inim, and some were geniuses, some finished Shas nine times, and did see him at Shas, whatever it is. What was the, the issue? The issue was nobody ever sat with them to connect to their mind, to their heart, to their souls. Whether it's whether it's Gemara, whether it's whether it's Judaism, whether it's godliness, whether it's emotional growth, whatever the area is. So, in other words, the Nimshal remained here, and the people remain here, and there's no connection, and that's it. So, this is all why, despite my desire. I say, guys, now we're going to talk about marriage. <laughs> That's what I meant. Last week when you finished the minor. Yeah. Before you did the recap, the beautiful recap that you printed. The, the eight sadas, 16 pages, yeah. Which you should read if you have a chance. A lot of work went into it. And a lot of good mashalam. <laughs> Going to a wedding. Well, I was talking about self-consciousness, yeah? And I saw people are not understanding. So what did I say? You go to a wedding, yeah? And you're busy in your mind. Should I go to the dance? Not. Am I am I or am I not chash enough? Or am I going to be rejected or not? Suddenly, everybody was smiling. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, 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 I knew that. I know. I would encourage you to but 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 I'm I'm explaining to you that there's always a certain sacrifice in it, because it's uh, and it's important to understand, because some people get stuck in the marshal, and really the marshal is only a tool for the nimshal. You always have to go back and forth and never get stuck in the marshal. I find that learning of Hasidus 
grows on you. And you Emes. don't understand. That's true. By time, osmosis, I don't know why. It refines you. And it's like the Emes. It's not instant understanding. That's true. That's true. But under Mishalim, it's... That's true. But without the Mishalim, it's going to be real tough. <laughs> okay. For which one is the the move? This world or or upstairs? Upstairs is is uh, rest. How far upstairs? Far? Upstairs is the food. <laughs> so that's always the nimsha. The food is always the nimsha. What's that song they sing now? Me meinenish can geld, me meinenish can covered, right? But to go upstairs only if you have to go over here. So this is the the, the nimshel. Everything is a mushal and a nimshal. That's the point. In one in one way, this is a mushal and upstairs is a nimshal. And on another level, upstairs is a mushal and this is the nimshal. Depends. We'll see. This is already a much deeper place. Tomorrow, Bezer Hashem, we're going to explore maybe some examples in Teira. I'm not going to go through 3,000 levels because I don't know 3,000 levels. But just to give an example, a mushal, <laughs> Of what Al Tareb is saying, how you could see an idea on one level, and really, if you go higher, it's always only a marshal. Because he he understood the whole Torah worked this way. And ultimately, even the highest level of Torah was still a marshal for Kadmaini, as we will see. Okay. A wonderful day. We'll continue Beis Hashem tomorrow at seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Gemara needs a marshal, and the Gemara is a marshal. Vashti was clipper, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. How do you know that word? We'll say, <laughs> I said it yesterday. I said it Shabbos morning. From Vashti, yeah. It says in one of the Swam. Vashti naked. She's the cook. Unbelievable. Atazah. Because it's not clipper, yeah. That's it. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Her definition was a cover up. Yesterday morning. says he heard from the Baal Shem said that Vashti, when you take off her clothes, nothing exists. I saw it in Eir HaMeyer. Rebzev Wolf of Jitomer. Rebzev Wolf of Jitomer. They bring the fine and the fine. The interesting thing is, it makes a lot of sense with 3,000 shalom. They bring down the same with the Altered Avon, the same as with the Shemta of the Machmah. You say five words, and it means a whole word. You could like sit, sit. Yeah, sit. yeah, yeah. So this is the same concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what, this is what the Rebbe is doing here today also. That's what we try to do. We're so far from it. Yeah. People could learn, the people learn these my modern for years, and they're like... You bring out you bring out what he's saying. It's life changing. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net/donate.